The following podcast is a Simpronto Media production. Welcome to the Waste Away Podcast. Hey guys, I'm so excited to introduce to you my next guest. His name is Dr. Ken Berry, and he's wrote an amazing book called Lies My Doctor Told Me. I love that. It is a great, great title. And today we're talking about adrenal fatigue, thyroid, and fasting. So I can't wait. Ken, tell listeners a little bit about yourself for those who have not heard about you yet. Sure. Thanks for having me on. I'm a family physician. I've been practicing medicine, family medicine, in uh, the state of Tennessee in the U.S. for the last 20 years. And at an earlier point in my career, I became morbidly obese, pre-diabetic, very inflamed, severe heartburn, reflux, GERD, uh, joint pain every day. And it really was incongruous of me to attempt to tell people, Hey, here's how you're, here's how to be healthy. Here's how to lose weight. Here's how to do all these things when I couldn't even make those things happen in my own health. Mm. And so I kind of went back to the drawing board and the book lies. My doctor told me is kind of a culmination of all the different things that I believed as a doctor back in 2001, 2002, 2003, that just weren't true. And these were things that I was telling patients on a daily basis. Hey, you should do this. Hey, you should avoid this. And it turns out none of that stuff is based in in common sense or based in research or based in physiological fact. So that's where the book came from. And during the, this kind of journey of through through paleo, through keto. Now I've been carnivore here lately with a a ton of intermittent fasting and then longer fasts sprinkled in in there. That's kind of how I've gotten where I'm at today. Awesome. So one of the biggest questions that we get from people is, can you do fasting if you have adrenal fatigue? What is your answer to that? So let's first of all unpack this, this kind of global diagnosis or description of adrenal fatigue. Mm. Um, I do not doubt for a moment that the people who have been given that diagnosis have every one of the symptoms. I don't, there's no doubt about that. You definitely have those symptoms, but is there a discrete diagnosis of adrenal fatigue or is that just a, a description of a constellation of symptoms Mm-hmm. that we've kind of put that moniker on. And I think that, that that is a discussion that needs to continue. I'm not I'm not convinced that there is such a physiological thing as adrenal fatigue. Because if you if you had someone who had been diagnosed with adrenal fatigue by some other healthcare provider, if you checked all of their adrenal lab work, right? All their lab work, all their lab values could very well be within normal limits and even in, within the optimal normal, but they'd still have those symptoms. And so I'm not discounting the symptoms. I'm not saying you don't experience what you experience, but let's not just hang our hat on a diagnosis of adrenal fatigue and then stop looking for causes. I think that's where you get into to trouble is if you say, okay, I've got adrenal fatigue. I don't have to look any further for any deeper problems or, or for any more shallow problems for that matter. So let me just say that about adrenal fatigue. But with all that being said, absolutely people suffer from these symptoms. And you do hear influencers, doctors, gurus out there who say, oh, if you have adrenal fatigue, you shouldn't fast. And I, I, I just would ask one simple question, what are you basing that on? Are you basing it on our ancestry on this planet as Homo sapiens sapien? Because if you are, we we have fasted since our our time on this planet, anywhere from two hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand years as Homo sapiens sapien. We've always fasted. Every major religion uh, has had fasting as part of their integral day to day life. And there was no exception, you know, oh, well, if you, if you have adrenal fatigue, then don't fast. There wasn't, a, there, that exception didn't exist back then. Ad, uh, fasting is healthy for every human being. So if you're homo sapiens sapien, which is what a human being is, fasting is good for you. And, and you can say, well, should I fast if I have X medical condition or X diagnosis? The answer is always, without a doubt, yes, fasting should be part of 
what you do. Now, you may not want to do longer, you know, four, five, six, right. seven, 10, 15 day fast if you have some of these diagnoses. But can you blend some amount of, of daily intermittent fasting into your health regimen, your fat loss regimen? 100% yes. Yes. And one of the things, and obviously I don't agree with this, but people, what I've heard people say, and they come to me and they say, if you have adrenal fatigue, if you have thyroid problems, if you have unbalanced blood sugar, you know, if you're dealing with any of these imbalancing imbalances, then fasting is not your friend because the body requires a stable, stable enough adrenal function, blood glucose levels, and you know, in order for you to just engage in intermittent fasting, you don't want to have long gaps without eating because it may have your blood sugar to plummet and it may exasperate adrenal fatigue and thyroid problems. And so for me, obviously I don't agree with that because, um, I believe for me, I had, before I started doing fasting, my blood sugar levels were all over the place. When I finally started doing intermittent fasting and longer fasts, my blood sugar has massively stabilized. So it's yep. it's the opposite that is true. Absolutely. But that's that's a big, you know, obstacle people have. And I think part of the problem is when you have uh spokespersons or or experts in in air quotes in this space you have a lot of those people who don't have a good bedrock understanding of human physiology and so what i, I would counter that is i would say well show me if you fast if someone fasts for 16 hours or 36 hours show me the degradation in their adrenal function. Let's let's see it in the lab work. Let's check let's check their adrenal function labs here, and then let's check it 16 hours into a fast and 36 hours. And what you're going to find is that the the adrenal function, if anything, gets better. It's not going to get worse. Thyroid function is the same thing. And when you have these influencers out there who have a partial understanding of human anatomy, but not a deep enough understanding, they'll say things like, oh, you need a certain amount of carbohydrates if you have adrenal fatigue, or you need a certain amount of carbohydrates if you have hypothyroidism, or if you have, have Hashimoto's or one of the other autoimmune uh, thyroiditis. It's just not true at all. There's Human beings don't need any carbohydrates at all to live, and most people don't need many carbohydrates to function optimally, and that includes people who have hypothyroidism or what we're going to agree is a constellation of symptoms known as adrenal fatigue. You don't need to carb up. You don't need to carb cycle. You don't need any carbohydrates at all. And I'll give you a, a case study of my wife, Nisha, who has Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And <clears throat> back when we were paleo, you know, we were eating much more whole food carbs, but still a ton of carbs every day. She felt terrible, had no energy, just was, was miserable. And then as we transitioned into the ketogenic way of eating, uh, she felt a little better by eating fewer carbohydrates. And the first time she ever tried to do a 24 hour fast, she stopped at about 20 hours in and she felt awful. She's like, I'm fasting. I can't fast. Maybe these people are right. But then the second and third time, and now she fasts every day. She does at least an 18, if not a 20 hour fast every single day. And she feels better now at 34 than she felt at 24. And that's because when you honor the, the physiology and you honor the genetics that is a human being, you have to you have to ultimately come to grips with the fact that fasting is a nor is just as normal of a physiological process as is breathing as is your heart beating as is your body monitoring and correcting your electrolyte levels your body can do that stuff effortlessly because it's normal we've been doing it since our entire existence on this planet are you enjoying the summit and hearing all the great advice that you don't want to forget? Get the all access pass and get all the video presentations and the audio downloads of every single session. You can get the all access pass and listen to the summit all year long if you want. The best part is you get all of the transcripts so you can go back and read and see every little note that they talked about. Go to FastingResetSummit.com to get your all-access pass today. Hey guys, Lauren here. 
Did you know Chantel just released her new book, Fasting of Freedom? The book is all about the benefits of fasting from a biblical perspective. You'll discover how you can see supernatural healing in your body. You will learn how to discern God's still, small whisper to guide you and help you make decisions. You will also master utilizing God's power to overcome difficult times and receive a breakthrough when you are stuck. And you will see how fasting can help you gain victory over a nagging area of sin in your life. You can order your copy right now on Amazon or go to fastingoffreedom.com. Link is in the show notes. Hey guys, I just finished writing a quick little 20 page recipe book that has some of my most amazing smoothie recipes. Everyone that comes over is like, Chantel, you can turn a smoothie into gold. And so I'm sharing that with you free. It's got my tropical colada smoothie recipe, my extra super green smoothie that tastes delicious, and it's all for free. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash smoothie for your free book. I've also developed my own product line. You'll be able to get all these multivitamins that I'm doing in one pill. Each nutrient is totally legit. All the formulas are tested and science-backed without any mystery additives. Personally, my thyroid is better. My skin is glowier. I have more energy. This supplement is vegan, non-GMO, gluten, and allergy-free. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash supplements and check them out. Now back to the show. Mm, love it. Well, I love how you are an MD because a lot of times we have a lot of functional medicine doctors on there, but you, you know, are different because you actually are a real MD. Now, are you still seeing patients? Very limited. Uh, a few months back, my clinic, which was in a little rural town in Tennessee, burned to the ground. And oh so we, we relocated, we've moved to Nashville and I'm going to, I'm, I'm getting the process of getting a, just kind of a limited part-time practice back up because I enjoy practicing medicine. Uh, but I, what I don't enjoy is seeing 40 or 50 people a day, like I used to back when I was practicing full time. Mm -hmm. And as you, you may or may not know, I've got a little bit of an online presence now and, uh, you know, I've got some social media going and I really enjoy being able to reach out and affect the, the health of thousands of people because in the end, that's what doctors, that's, that's what we went to medical school for was to help people be healthier. And I, you know, for many years, I tried to do that one patient at a time. Now I can do it, you know, in the hundreds or in the thousands using, using social media. And I really enjoy doing it that way. And so I'll have a, I'll have a limited practice in Nashville, but it won't be how I spend the most hours of my day. So now let's talk about thyroid for just a second. Um, you know, I've had some thyroid issues in the past, so I feel like our listeners, you know, it's like who listens to the show or people who kind of have the same issues that I, I did. But so let's talk about thyroid and constipation. Those are my two sure. favorites I love to talk about. So I know you said your wife has Hashimoto's. So yes. what are some things that she has done um, besides the fasting? So is she eating in like a either a one to four hour eating window each day? Yeah, typically four to six hours is her is her feasting window because we mm -hmm. we don't believe in portion control. We don't believe in, in calorie restriction. I don't think any of that stuff's necessary if you're eating on the spectrum of the proper human diet. I think that your body, just like your body regulates how many times a minute you're breathing right now, you don't have to think about that. When you're eating the proper human diet, your body can just, take care of all that stuff for you. You don't have to monitor and you don't have to track and record and count. None of that stuff's necessary. And so for typically uh, she'll have a four to six, sometimes a four to eight hour feasting window a day and she eats until she's comfortably full and then she stops. Got it. And now is she taking thyroid medicine right now? Yeah, she's on a low dose of a desiccated thyroid replacement hormone, which is really, uh, for all of your listeners, if you have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's, please consider trying at least a three-month trial of one of the desiccated thyroid replacement hormones and try to get away from the fake T4, which is levothyroxine or Synthroid. It actually has synthetic in the name because it's not real. Yeah. So let's talk about, I'd like you to talk about the difference between Synthroid and the desiccated and sure. then talk about 
you know, what happens to some people, why they can't convert their T4 to their T3. What's blocking that from happening? Yeah. So Synthroid or levothyroxine is that's the that's the usual thyroid replacement pseudo hormone that most doctors are comfortable giving. And for many years in my practice, I was very uncomfortable if a patient would ask for the desiccated because I just didn't understand it. I didn't know what it was. I I wasn't taught that. But the more I read and and researched, the more I found that it actually makes much better sense to use a desiccated thyroid replacement hormone rather than levothyroxine because first of all, levothyroxine or synthroid is not real thyroid hormone. It is fake. It is synthetic. The only way you can get a patent on a molecule is if it does not occur naturally in nature. And levothyroxine is a fake T4-like molecule. And it, it does resemble T4, and it does work somewhat in the T4 receptor in the human body. And the body is able to convert it to a certain degree into active T3. But very many people just don't get the conversion from it to, to real T3, which is what you need. That's what your body actually uses. And so... Uh, Most doctors just think, oh, you just don't have enough T4, so I'm going to give you Synthroid. Therefore, I fixed every single problem that could could occur. And that's not true at all. There can be multiple problems along the cascade of anywhere from producing T4 in your thyroid. Then you can have a problem with converting T4 to T3. And you can actually have problems out with the T3 receptor out in the body. Any of these places can be... Uh, there can be a problem, and it's usually always caused by inflammation or an autoimmune problem. That's what causes virtually every one of these problems. Uh, desiccated thyroid, and the brand names are Armor, Nature, uh, WP, NP, and then in Canada, I think they have one called Urfa. These are uh, basically dry, freeze-dried, ground-up, uh, pig thyroid glands, and, and it is very tightly controlled how much T3 is in there or how much T4, but the, the, the benefit of taking a desiccated is you're not only are you getting T4, you're getting real T4, right? But you're also getting real T3. You're also getting real T2 and T1, which, you know, we say in medicine, we don't know really what those do, but obviously they do something or they wouldn't be there. Because whether you believe in a creator creator or evolution, you have to admit nature or the creator is very, very intelligent. They don't make things that's just a waste of time. That doesn't happen. And so with desiccated thyroid, you're getting real T1, real T2, real T3, and real T4 in a physiologically appropriate ratio. And uh, my wife could tell the difference immediately when she switched from levothyroxine to, I think she takes nature thyroid is the one she takes. Immediately, she could tell, yeah, that's just, that just works better. I feel better. I'm more mentally alert. I'm, I, I have more energy. My energy is sustained through the day. And that's been the, the, my, my experience with most of my patients who take thyroid replacement is they do much better on a desiccated than on fake T4. Yeah. And out of the different ones that you said, do you have a favorite of which one is your favorite best desiccated thyroid, like the nature thyroid or armor or? I think think all of the desiccateds work better than levothyroxine without exception. So there's no contest there. Now among the desiccateds, what I would typically do is I would prescribe patients, whichever one their insurance covered. And so a lot of insurances won't cover armor, but they will cover nature. And so I I feel like they are so much better than levothyroxine, whichever one I could get covered by their insurance, unless they were prepared to pay cash for it, that's the one I would prescribe. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of people, they've forgotten the concept of, oh, you can just write a check for your prescription. You can actually do that. And pharmacies don't mind if you do that. And some of the desiccated thyroids are not that expensive. They're actually about a dollar a day for most people or or a little less. And so if your insurance says, no, we're only going to pay for levothyroxine and nothing else, get out your checkbook and spend 20, 30, 40 bucks for your month's supply of your your nature or your armor. I promise you it's going to be worth the money. 
Yes, absolutely. I agree. And I personally am a living testament to that. I was on at one point up to 120 milligrams of Synthroid and they kept saying, you need to you know, go up and go up and go up. And I'm like, this is insanity. And I was feeling worse and worse and gaining weight. And so finally I went to a naturopath that said, look, your body is not converting your T4 to your T3. And so they actually put me on um, armor thyroid, but then also a very low dose of just T3. Have you ever prescribed that to someone or talk about yeah. that for just a second? Yeah, and I have prescribed that for in, in, in my experience. And I, like I said, I practiced for 20 years before the fire. Most people do find with a high enough dose of just nature or just uh, Urfa or just armor, but there are a few people who seem to need a little extra bump of T3. And I probably say out of my hypothyroid patients, probably five or 10 percent would need a, a second prescription for just T3, which also needs to be bioidentical. It doesn't need to be a synthetic T3. It needs to be real T3. And that's what that's how they felt their best. And while we're talking about this, another thing that's very, I very commonly see is, you know, doctors that we want all your lab values to be within normal range. Obviously, that's what we want. And so a lot of women usually women, some few men, but mostly women feel their best and, and have optimal health function when you give them enough desiccated thyroid to actually make their TSH on the low side. And that freaks a lot of doctors out because they feel like they're giving that patient hyperthyroidism or overactive thyroid by giving them that much armor. Uh, and I definitely don't think you need to zero out their TSH by giving them, you know, that much armor. But a thing that healthcare providers have to understand is if you take too much thyroid replacement hormone, you feel just as crummy as if you don't have enough. A lot of doctors have this weird belief that the more thyroid hormone you take, the better you feel. It's like crack or something. And any woman will tell you that's been on it. If you take too much, you feel bad in a whole different way, but you still don't, it's not good. It's not like more, the more you take, the better you feel, but a lot of doctors believe that. And so I found in my practice that keeping a woman's TSH under 1.0 was where the majority of my patients felt their best and could perform their best. And some, some had to be under 0.5 in order to say, yes, I feel normal, I feel good, everything is operating as it should be, Uh, my heartbeat is not too fast, I don't have anxiety, I don't feel anxious, I feel great. And they would, I would have to give them enough desiccated thyroid to to get their TSH under 0.5 for them to feel normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had to take... I had to take Cytomel, which is Cytomel a synthetic version? Do you there know? Is, there, there is one that is a synthetic, but if you'll get your prescriptions at a compounding pharmacy, they can compound T3 in, mm-hmm. in an equivalent dose. And a lot of them will count that as a generic a Cytomel and they'll actually bill your insurance for it. Some won't, some will, but there is a, there is a bioidentical form of T3 that you can get from a compounding pharmacy. Got it. Okay. And the, the what I was talking about earlier, the danger is some reference labs say that a, a TSH under five is normal, right? And, and, nice. and anybody with hypothyroid will tell you if their TSH is, is a three and a half to five, they feel, they don't feel good right? Some reference labs now have tightened it up and said, well, if it's, if it's above three, that's not normal. And so a lot of doctors who don't really understand the thyroid at a deep enough level will say, the, you'll say, I'm still feeling fatigue. I don't feel good. I'm constipated. I think we need to go up on the dose. And they'll look at your TSH and they'll say, well, it's 4.5. That's within normal limits. I'm not going to go up on your dose anymore. And so I started talking about your TSH range. Uh, so a TSH of one, that's the Maserati end of normal, right? It's still within normal limits, but it's the Maserati end. On the other end, if you've got a, a TSH of 4.5, that's that's not, that's like a, a, a Chevy Cavalier. Yeah, it's still a car, but I'd much rather have a Maserati, right? And so don't let your doctor say, 
oh, your TSH is three or three and a half or four or four and a half. That's normal. I'm not going to go up anymore. Be insistent, be persistent, respectfully persistent and say, look, isn't 1.5? That's normal too, isn't it? And your doctor's going to have to say, well, yeah, that's within normal limits and say, I want you to give me enough thyroid replacement hormone so that my TSH is one or one and a half because I feel better and I'm still within normal limits. So you don't have to freak out. Yeah. And I agree with that. I would say for me, I'm the happiest when my TSH is one or less like 0.5. If my TSH is at 0.5, that's when I'm feeling good. I'm, you know, doing well. Now, what about any supplements? So like, is there anything like selenium or any supplements that you've said, Hey, these work well, if you have thyroid issues and then these I would stay away from if you have thyroid issues. Yeah, selenium is definitely vital for proper thyroid function. Uh, it's a cofactor in several of the reactions, con, you know, producing T4 and converting T4 to T3. There, and all the minerals really are vital. And so eating on the spectrum of the proper human diet, you're going to get most of those minerals in the supply that you need. A lot of people do need to focus on eating a couple of Brazil nuts every single day to make sure they're getting enough selenium. Uh, Other people would rather take a little selenium supplement. I prefer getting all of your vitamins and minerals from real food. Uh, I don't sell any supplements, so that's what makes me different. A lot of the naturopaths and other NMDs, they have their own line of supplements, so guess what? You don't have to worry about what you eat. You just take the supplement. And I, I strongly disagree with that line of reasoning. I don't, I don't think that works that way at all. It works for their profit margin, but it doesn't really work for your long-term health span and lifespan. Now, why do you think that so many people are having thyroid issues now? Because, I mean, wouldn't you agree? It's like every time you turn around, it's like thyroid, 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 thyroid. What is going on and why are we having this massive epidemic of thyroid issues? I think it has reached epidemic levels. And I I think it's because of what we're exposed to in our environments. And so, you know, immediately people start thinking about their deodorant and their perfume and the fumes in the air. And I think that stuff does matter, but that is not the majority of the problem. The biggest exposure you get to the outside environment is the food that you put in your mouth, what you eat and what you drink confuses your immune system and it causes your immune system to start to attack parts of you that it should not attack. And that could be, uh, that could be, that could affect the conversion from T4 to T3. That could actually affect the T3 receptors on your cells that could affect your, I mean, your body can actually start to attack your thyroid gland. If it is so confused by the crap you're putting in your mouth it doesn't know the difference between you and non-you. And some people eating this, the standard American crap diet, they'll have inflammation in their knee joints, and that's caused from their diet. Some people will have gut issues. That's caused from your diet. Some people express it as an autoimmune thyroiditis, like my wife did. That's from the diet. And now that she's eating a very fatty, meat-heavy, ketogenic diet, and some days she's 100% carnivore, And then, like I said earlier, she's fasting anywhere from 16 to 20 hours a day. She feels amazing. And she just got off the scale this morning. And she, she has, we we just had a baby. He's three and a half months old. Little baby. Oh, congratulations. He he is a sweetheart, but she has lost all of her baby weight and is actually at a weight now that she hasn't been at in 10 years. Wow. Yeah. And so, uh, Stop being afraid of meat. Meat does not cause cancer. Meat does not cause uh, uh, heart attacks. None of that stuff is true. All the studies that they use to to say that that was proven are just bogus observational studies. They don't prove anything. All men and all women should should have a, a large portion of their diet that consists of fatty meat, whether it's red meat, whether it's seafood. It doesn't matter. You've got to have these things not only to get the nutrition that you need, but to get these vitamins and minerals that we were talking about earlier that play an integral role in your body, in the production of thyroid hormone and in the, the, the conversion into active T3 and into the, the way your receptor accepts that T3. If there's inflammation anywhere along that pathway, 
it's not going to work right. And then you're not going to have optimal health and function. Now, have you seen people reduce their thyroid medication or get off altogether from fasting and improving Um, their diet? Yeah, from fasting and from a low carbohydrate diet, I had multiple people in my practice who would, uh, they would come in feeling rotten and like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I mean, I'm taking my thyroid, but I feel terrible. My heart's beating fast. I'm anxious and, I, and my fatigue is back. And I would check their lab levels and I'd be like, whoa, it looks like you're taking too much thyroid hormone replacement. And when, when they were eating low carb and, and also fasting, I would have to almost without exception, reduce the amount of thyroid replacement hormone that they took. And that tells me that their thyroid, something in that pathway that we talked about earlier from mm-hmm. production to, to it being taken into the receptor on the cells, something's working better. Something's working more efficiently. We, we may not ever know where along that pathway things are working better. And I don't really care as long as it is working better. And so I would have to reduce their armor from 60 to 30 or from 90 to 60. And I, I don't, I don't think that you can completely reverse hypothyroidism with your diet and fasting. At least I haven't seen it happen very often. I've heard about it, but in my practice, I saw, I definitely saw an improvement in thyroid function, but I don't know if I ever saw a complete reversal of hypothyroidism. Awesome. Well, it has been so much fun talking to you. And I feel like we just became fast friends here on this show. And when my mom lives in Arkansas, which isn't too far from Tennessee, because you live in Tennessee, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have to come visit you, even in your new practice, and just come by and say hi. So tell listeners where they can find you, where they can follow you, and where they can find out about your amazing new book. So the book is available at all bookstores and there's actually an audible version of it now. If you're spoiled like I am and you, you'd me rather too. listen to a book than read it, it's called Lies My Doctor Told Me. It's available everywhere. And then I do most of my work on YouTube. I have over 250 videos on my YouTube channel now. If you just search for Dr. Barry on YouTube, I think you'll find me. And I just recently uh, got my one millionth subscriber. So yeah, it's crazy. I, I never believed it. When when I first was thinking about it, my wife, Nisha, said, you should start it, do it, make a YouTube video. And I'm like, you can just imagine this old grumpy doctor. I'm like, that's stupid. I'm not doing that. And so we had several arguments about it. And I was finally like, okay, fine, I'll make a YouTube video. And so obviously she was right. I also have a Facebook page uh, that we have over 200,000 people who are with us on that journey. I've got an Instagram I'm on Twitter. I'm on all social media. And so whatever your social media, your favorite is, just search for Dr. Barry and I think you'll find me. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. And if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantalRayway.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.